Aggie Pride. Aggie Pride. So I shared this with our staff the other day. I said, you guys don't know how incredibly challenging it is to come up here on Mondays after having the kind of season that we're having. It's very challenging. Some of the things that we're going through, I didn't anticipate some of the adversity, but I'm built for it. I'm built for it. And in my mind, it is stay the course. Stay the course. Stay focused on A, the development of our players, okay? Making sure they become the absolute best they can be on and off the field. Stay focused on providing them with a great experience here. When they leave here, they want to come back and say, the best four or five years of my life were there at North Carolina a and and then staying focused on building. And we build our program through recruiting, making sure that we share with the young men around the country, particularly on the Eastern Seaboard, uh, North and South, what a great product we have here at North Carolina a and Understanding that recruiting is the lifeblood of our program. Literally, I literally just left a meeting with compliance talking about the new transfer portal windows and how the windows will impact our ability to replenish our roster. And so um, it's with great understanding that I know that I depend on so many layers within the university community to be able to make sure that we're getting the absolute best in terms of recruiting and the support for our players. It's also challenging to talk about what happened 48 hours ago when we've literally started preparing for the next opponent. For those of you that were there, you saw it was a two-score game at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Two-score game. And in my mind, I had great belief that we had the ability to score two touchdowns within a span of 15 minutes. There are some challenges creating explosive plays for us. We had difficulty moving the ball. We were 2 of 14 on third down offensively, 2 of 14. And as I shared with our staff, some of those third downs were very makeable, third and two, third and three, third and four. So we have to do a better job of finding what it is that we do best and exploiting the weaknesses of the opponent in order to make those first downs. That keeps the chains moving. That keeps us moving down the field. So we, even if we don't score, we flip the field position. Defensively, we gave up four explosive play runs of 20 yards plus. Four. Some of that missed gap fits. Some were just missed tackles at the second and third level. Um, and we work, we focus, we drill tackling ad nauseum. It is the core of what we do defensively, beating blocks and tackling. And again, you know, it's very disappointing when we're unable to go out and execute at a level high enough for us to win the game. But as I said to our kids, look, there's a lot of football left to play. Yes, it sucks being one and six right now. It really does. But we got five games left to play. And six and six doesn't sound so bad when you look at where we are right now. But it has to start with this next game. It has to start with this next game. And as I've said throughout the course of the season, there are no waiver wires. We got who we've got. And so we have to find a way to the best of our ability to put our players in position to make plays and score offensively and defensively to keep the opponent from scoring points. I think 
even in spite of the way that game ended, there are some bright spots ahead for our a and football program. You'll see a couple of our young, younger players here today. Daniel Coles, who I think is going to be a tremendous running back, had the uh, chance to showcase some of his skills. Uh, Cade, who's a second-year player, uh, our leading tackler defensively, uh, really kind of evolving into a leadership role there. Uh, Jalen Hicks got on the field uh, for the first time uh, as a ball carrier and showed he's got a skill set that can help us. And so... Uh, understanding that we have some young guys that are being forced to play right now. But my hope is that their development and the things that we're going through right now will pay great benefits going down the road. And so now it's on to the next opponent. Okay, Hampton is behind us. It is on to Campbell. Another CAA game. Have to go on the road against a quality opponent. There are no easy games within this conference, but it is a very winnable game. And so as we've started our preparation, it's always about the who and what that can cause you to lose games. On their team, and how do we minimize it from impacting us uh, offensively and defensively? So we're in the very early stages of our preparations, our scouting report, uh, and planning on how to go on the road and win a CAA game against Campbell University. Yeah, I think our kids stayed engaged. You know, there's, you know, there's a lot of emotions throughout the course of the game. A guy makes a mistake, and then one of the veteran player, players jumps him, and then you know, he claps back at him. So there's a lot of emotion. I felt like our guys stayed engaged throughout the course of the game. Like I said, if you if you look at the score at the beginning of the fourth quarter, you know, we're down two scores. You would not think the game would end the way it did. Um, and so our guys stayed engaged. Uh, I felt like we had a chance to, early on in the game, if we could have just put together some more drives to have that breakout game that we've been looking for offensively. And, you know, we were able to take advantage of the great field position early, but we weren't able to take advantage of when we got the stops defensively and to be able to move the ball down the field to score again. And, you know, it's a very different game if you're up four scores early in the game versus two scores. You know, you're always trying to find the good and the lessons, to, the negative that can help you down the road. There are lessons to be learned from good and bad, whether you win or lose. And so, you know, you look back at, hey, we have the ability to create explosive plays. Look at this. We need to execute like this more. We need to call plays like this more. You know, when your, your number's called uh, offensively, you need to be able to rise in that moment. And defensively, understanding the things that cause you to lose, play, uh, lose games and it's explosive plays. So, like I said, we gave up four explosive play runs. We had an explosive play pass thrown over our head uh, a couple of different times and then missed tackles. It's consistency. If you look at the last two games, it's, oh man, that was a great play. And then something happens that's inconsistent. And if you look at the start of Saturday's game, oh wow, that's a great play. Great job, great call, great job defense of getting the third down stop, giving the offense the ball back. But there's not enough consistency in our play right now. And if we can consistently put a drive together to A, consume time and produce points, and B, defensively become more consistent on third down and in the red zone, we'll win the game because that's where the games are won and lost. Third down efficiency and in the scoring, uh, scoring zones. Well, I mean, you know, A, you want to win every game. You plan to win every game. Um, B, our goal was to be in position to compete for a CAA title. Okay, and so that's probably not a realistic goal now. But we have five conference games left. So win the next game. And then worry about the next game after that, you know. Win the next game.
you know, our job as coaches is to create a vision of what this should look like and then recruit the players capable of helping craft that vision into a culture where players start to hold each other accountable for their actions or inactions. And the very best teams have a large group of players that hold each other accountable. They set the standard. So Friday night, we had a Aggie football alum come talk to the team. And he talked about the standards that they had during his time here and the accountability that they had for, the, uh, for each other. And so when you get that in your program, I believe your program is going to elevate to the next level needed to compete for a championship. No, I believe in our staff. Um, we got great leaders. Our, our coaches care about the development of our players. Um, our coaches have had success coaching. They didn't just all of a sudden not know how to coach. And, uh, and so I believe in our staff. But as I shared with our staff yesterday, you know, this is a results-oriented business. And it's our job to produce results. And sometimes those results aren't immediate. Sometimes they're not immediate. But we need to see improvement and progress. And so um, that's where we're focused on, getting better.